we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big, big. Check it, check it, check it. It's Unique Hustle. It's your boy, ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? No, 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 I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean all, I mean all, I mean our Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. Just Google us, Boss Talk Podcast 101. We'll pop up first in line, I guarantee you. But if you want to see all our visuals, you got to go over to our YouTube channel. There you see all our visuals. Don't forget to hit subscribe, the notification bell, so you don't miss out on any of this fire content we're giving every single day. But if you want to see our exclusive content, you got to be a member. How you become a member is under each and every video, including this one right here in the description section below there's a link that says join our membership click that link follow all in all the instructions and thank me later because you're gonna enjoy it thank you for all the love and support man check it man hey man listen we got a special guest in here and uh she's always she frequents the show she's family uh mama scott is in the building y'all give it up for her. let me tell you something man uh i it, 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 i didn't know if i was gonna be able to make this one happen you know uh <laughs> I had already been calling. I wasn't going to do the show without me getting the other end of the story, you know. And I'm going to be real with you. I, I really, really love what you're doing down there when it comes down to Fast Bash. I wasn't able to make it to this one. Uh, I did send uh, my uh, my homegirl, Terry Cherry. Shout out, Terry Cherry. And shout out to Kanika. And, and what's the other girl's name? And her sister. You know, that name <laughs> rhyme a little bit. It's something. Uh, but Kanisha. if I didn't get your name right, nigga, you know who you is. You know what I'm saying? Listen, but anyway, thank you for coming on the show, Mama Scott. How you doing? Salute. You're welcome. I'm doing great. You know, I'm not going to play with you today. <laughs> let, let me tell you something, man. I ain't hey, listen, to play. Listen, I, I'm going to be real with you. I really, really enjoy, like, seeing the the the, the people performing, uh, watching the people who I've already known, you know, as uh, far as the ones who won it and the runner-up. I've been, they've been here they yes. they were running around with Terry Cherry a long time ago coming here, so I I, I enjoy seeing them yeah. triumph over the whole thing. To be honest with you, yes. because they're my people. You know what I'm saying? Like I I rock with them. Right. So so you doing a great thing down there. You know what I'm saying? So fast bash. Uh, let's again, cause you fast ENT. I see the chain. I ain't never get mine, so I know I ain't <laughs> in that thing yet. But let's talk about like like what inspired fast bash, so people can hear it once again. Uh, what inspired fast bash about? maybe five, six years ago, was the fact that East Texas really didn't have a platform and, and basically my artists, my sons didn't have one either and we had people of interest that was wanting to invest in them that wanted to come to East Texas to premiere them because they was talking about putting money into them. Actually, it was Dallas, uh, I mean, Truckers Cafe up here out of Dallas is the ones, the investors, Paulette Woods and Jalon, uh, Jalon Woods, uh, Paulette Johnson and Jalon Woods. Um, but that, that kind of de deteriorated, so we didn't really go forward with it, but we did go forward with creating the event to bring them from Dallas to East Texas. And that was our first year of doing Fast Bash. And during that time, we, as a family, because we are a family label, um, wanted to include not just us, we wanted to include the entire um, community. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we did. So we opened it up to where I made it. We actually, me and my oldest son, Franchise and DJK and AJ1K actually came together and got a like an itinerary of what we thought it would be. And along with Say Lookout Trilly of East Texas, um, and just came up with, hey, this will be fun. We just basically was throwing stuff out there as to what we've seen. And I went to the city and got a, a park permit. And we did it in the park for the first two years outside in the heat in the middle of July um, for 12 hours a day. And it was uh, the, the gifts and the contributions to the artists, all that came from me. And at the time, I was working on a nine to five. So I was grinding pretty hard working um, on a, just a an industrial job. I used to work for Ball Corporation making cans for Budweiser. So I made decent living so I was able to put back into what I what my vision was for artists. And it was a, a lot of killing and stuff going on in East Texas at the time. Um, like at that time, it, we were at peaking almost 20 unsolved murders of black males in Longview, Texas alone. And my husband was disturbed by one of the kids that um, got murdered. So it just made me even be more passionate to try to give the young black males specific specifically um, a way to vent and a way to get you know some of their frustrations out and music is one of those avenues that a lot of the black males really kind of like you know they migrate to is music um, so it was successful um, we bloods crips everybody in the park together no no situations 
I didn't even have security the first year because I couldn't afford it. But the respect I feel like from the from the young black males that got to know me in Longview specifically and Tyler, because I'm from Tyler, Henderson, now Longview, I'm all the way around uh, East Texas. Um, I think that contributed to a lot of the success that it has when you got some of the people like the Joy Millers, the Biggie Bag Tims, the Aldis, you know, the people like that that already were rooted in, in, the, uh, in East Texas they really helped me a lot, you know, as far as like keeping mindsets where they needed to be because they're leaders of their communities, in my opinion. Wow. I mean, you know, when I when I look at what, you know, I wasn't able to come to the first one, but I would I come to the second one? Yes, the second I one. I came to the second one and they no, shut. No, you came to the third one. The third oh, one. Okay. I remember the yeah. one in the park because you, you had news yeah. news reporters and yeah. everybody was out there. Yeah, so KOTV, I remember seeing the, the clips of yeah. it, you know. Yeah, we and, had a lot of coverage. And I've seen, and, and that's something I do notice about down there, that they do get involved when yeah. you guys put a function together. Yes. Um, they seem to be, they embrace it a lot of times, yes. and I think that's dope. Uh, but, like, the one I came to, you know, we ended up getting shut down. I remember that, you know, there was a lot going on as uh, far as uh, the way they done it, and, and, you know, you lost a lot of money in that. You know, the one thing about you, You've been putting that bag up for a minute. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Without and profit. Yeah. Without, without profit. profit. And 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 when you do it like that, a lot of times you be like, man, is there a light at the end of the tunnel? How do you keep up? How do you maintain the tenacity to keep going when you keep hitting brick walls and stumbling and getting back up? You like when Rick Ross went to Canada, you know, that bodyguard he had, the one that was trying to talk when you stumbling yeah. around with this thing, like, yeah. and then you catch your balance. Like, <laughs> how do you keep going? I'm not a lover of money. Okay, okay. Yes, I'm a lover of people. Um, so I've never had money like that. I've always made uh, fair wages and decent wages, you know, 75000 a year based on my income where I've worked um, and the background that I've had. But I've never been the type to hoard or to really focus on, like, having money just set up beside me. I've always spent as much as I've made. I've always given, given away more than I've kept with people around me. Um, my purpose is a little bit different than most. Um, so I'm not money driven, if that makes sense. Makes uh, sense. You know, so at the end of the day, um, how I, what keeps me going is the gratitude and the way that people receive the blessings that I try to put out there and the, and the mindset changes and the hope for, for people like us that are really, really in a dark area in their lives. Because with me being on the scene, I feel, and along with several others in East Texas, not just myself, because I don't contribute it just to myself. There are several common, um, you know, denominators that go into making this success for East Texas. You know, shout out to Dwayne Black of The Blaze, the radio station. He's been doing this for years with home Texas homegrown shout out to him DJ Juice of the Blaze a lot of them just come together Pops Johnson he's got that area up there in Mount Pleasant or right, Mount Enterprise I can't is one of them <laughs> yeah 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 but, yeah he over that Mount Vernon Mount yep. Pleasant Dangerfield area yeah so many of us are really coming together no trill pill talk uh how's it trill talk no pill talk let me get his boy. name right cause that's my boy he, too. Down, uh, he, yes. he covered all you yes. know and he so buried, shout out to Lily. they rock with him up there in uh, Houston hard too yes uh, a lot of the Dallas bloggers I see them but I really see them connecting with him in H-Town on, on a whole nother yes. level as well as East Texas and Dallas I yeah. see him doing his thing so but all of us are kind of coming together more and more now now so more than ever BT Studios uh, Benjamin Harkless with Close Kirk closed circuit TV so many of us really see the vision and and a lot of them contribute my vision as to them really hopping on and seeing it you know because everybody's doing stuff independently but we're all headed towards one common man goal. you guys are dope man like I said when I look at what you guys have done you know far as with what East Texas is you know y'all you guys are y'all killing the game man so yeah. how, how are you gonna keep that uh, legacy going. What's next? What's next is just for me to just keep collabing with people that want to succeed and want our young adults to have, you know, some hope and some success um, and not have to feel like they got to go outside of our region hundreds of miles away when we can really do it ourselves. And actually, you know, hey, 903 it's just what it is 903936 uh, area code and that covers a real big area not just Tyler and Longview there are so many cities and I want to shout out to all of them because I love each and all of all of them and I you know a lot of people say well you can't love everybody you can 
Because how can you say you love Jesus and you've never seen him? Wow. You know, and you can't love people. Human, wow. You know, mankind. I love mankind and womankind. So, yeah, I love people. Now, you know, like, like the one thing I do know is, like, when I, when I was down there and, and experienced the Fast Bash, um, you know, a lot of love, a lot of people that, yeah. that was really the ones who did get to perform. The one good highlight for me during that time was that all of the people that were local got yeah. to perform. That's yeah. what I loved about yeah. that. It wasn't really, I ain't, I know every, all the, the celebrity people yeah. and all that, they was the okay, you know, yeah. they gonna come, but just for those people yes. in that city, God knew what he was doing, Mama Yes, Scott. because they've never had that type of platform to be able to do, and to me, the highlight of Fast Bash is giving our local artists the platform, or people that, that come down from different areas like Dallas or wherever they're from, to, to be a part of what we have going on because honestly, Fast Bash is to me is the biggest uh, platform in Texas as far as any platform you can ever get on as far as a local artist, especially with the production that I put behind it. They'll never have that type of production unless somebody put some real bread behind it. And I feel like East Texas artists deserve that. You know, we're always like, people always want to count, you know, talk down on us, be condescending, call us country, or make us feel like that we're ignorant people. We're not. We're just as smart as everybody else. What do you, 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 you and uh, your son, DJ K, y'all went out, y'all did the song with T.I. Yes. Um, you've done songs with Sauce Walker, with, 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 uh, it was the AJ1K. Yeah. You done songs with, uh, with, with Boosie. You, you've done, you, you guys have put up budgets. What are you guys expecting to get? Uh, what have you fulfilled the things that you wanted to fulfill in these features? Yes. Why did you do them? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? It's like uh, if you have a bucket list, right? And if you get money, like if you if today you say if I hit the lottery tomorrow, I'm gonna do X Y Z before I leave this world, right? There's so much stuff going on in the world right now to the scary, to where it really is kind of like. Do we have hope with everything that's going on? There's so much stuff going on in the world. And I'm one of the type of people, I live in the moment. I live for today. I know who holds tomorrow, but I know tomorrow might not come. So I groom my children to think the same way, you know, to where if there's anything you want to do in your life and you got the opportunity to do it, no matter what nobody say to you, get it done. Because you can leave here and leave those memories with your kids or whatever the case may be. So success, it depends on what you define as success. Success to us is accomplishing the things that we never thought we would be able to do. Well, so when you, you guys took Jeff there and y'all went down to Miami and mm -hmm. you did that with the journey, um, where, where is the journey at? The journey is still active. Uh, she's not up under my management currently, but uh, she's still active. She's raising her, her child. She's still doing music, still an amazing artist. Um, I'm not sure what her, what her future plans are right now, but I know she's still very active and wow. making videos and stuff. So. Okay, but also just the fact of just all of the stuff. You did something with her and Lil Runny as well. Yes. Um, you did a lot of different things, and I don't know the parts that, or the way these parts played, but just to give opportunity and just to connect the dots. I don't know. Yes. I know being a manager and dealing with different people that you deal with, um, just it's dope to see that kind of environment down on that end because you don't see that type no. of professionalism on that level. And it's never been my um, goal to like, you know, it's been their goal maybe, but we're independent, right? So what I want to say about that is, is that as you can see, the investments are there. And, and, you know, my oldest son has one with Big S the plug, which is blown sure up. Sure do, yeah, blown yeah. Up. Got one with Big um, X the plug. Shout out to Big X the plug. Shout out to Big X the plug. Him and Kyle, um, and the whole six hundred um, over there. And uh, shout out to my other family here in uh, Dallas uh, Casino. Um, but it's to me. It wasn't about like them getting signed. It was about them. These are their childhood, like people that they really, really admire, people that they listen to on the daily, people we sat and watched TV with as they grew up that they thought they would never be able to see and be in the room with. So I'm like, you know, we're going to get there one day. So to me, it wasn't about like when DJ chose to do the song with T.I. T.I. is one of his favorite artists, him and 50 Cent. Those are his two favorite artists. Everybody knows that in our house. He had all tips album covers throughout the years every every album he's ever done he has you know and you, if you listen to his music he's he's he sounds like tip in a lot of ways yeah and now how you know like like I, I remember we spoke about that last show and it just a dope thing like I said I just see the skin in the game man yeah. 
and I just see how much you put up and you know me I'm always trying to figure out where we going with the next you know yeah. you've, you've definitely the artists are dope you know they're doing their thing they're consistent um, how hard is it keeping everybody focused and, and, and moving forward it's 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 not really hard because I mean, you know, we're a family. Like I said, first and foremost, and life is lifing, you know. And so, to be an artist in twenty twenty four is very difficult because it's expensive. The COVID money's gone. You know what I'm saying? Man. So when everybody had COVID money and unemployment funds and rent relief and food stamps was at an all time high, you know, we were booming. And you've seen a lot of artists able to do a lot of things during that 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 span. Like it's almost like COVID really put a lot of people on. <laughs> Man. Literally, you know, with the PPP loans, whatever they want to call it, people did what they needed to do during that time to make sure that their dreams was happening or they invested in companies, they invested in themselves. It was a good time as far as that, but a bad time as far as us losing people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, but it's crazy how we have to die to get anything from the United States. Let me ask you this. You know, last time you came up here, probably about two, maybe three times ago, you had a whole crew of people with you. Yes. You, you, you was rolling, you were mobbing, yeah. you were coming through. You know, I said, what's going on, Mama Scott? Yeah. You say, I'm going down here to the show. I done spent <laughs> 2500 on this. I done spent 2500 We going to be meeting Chris Brown. Now, and I said that to, you know, get around to. 30 what, grand. Boston, you 30 spent grand. 30 grand. In all. Yes. See, I was going to get to that, but I didn't make it all the way. <laughs> I know you're 2500 per Chris person. Brown, I spent $30,000. You didn't even get to get the pictures, didn't did you? get the chance to take a picture with you. Let y'all tag him. Uh, well, I, I brought that up for a reason. In <laughs> Fort Worth the other night, uh, they, you know, uh, it, allegedly TMZ said that they jumped on some folks. I've seen that. You know, um, you know, these young men, you know, how important is it to keep your nose clean when you're dealing with a lot of pro high profile like, like, like people do? It's very important because you don't want people in this industry is a small circle. People think it's big, but everybody know everybody or everybody knows somebody that's pulling strings in this industry and you don't want to ever get blackballed, you know. So with me being who I am, I'm not trying to break into the industry like some people are. Some people like really want to land positions with different people, work for different corporations or whatever their case may be. I'm not one of them. I own a label that I have a passion behind. And I support East Texas artists, and I try to shine a light on them. Even with me having my own label, wherever we wherever we go, people can tell you I'm very adamant about stressing East Texas wherever we go. And there are so many people back there that that need the light on them. Even outside of the ones that you see that are traveling with me, I'm always very very pro East Texas because we do have a lot of like man. It's magnificent artists out there. I mean, I'm, I'm going to talk my shit. Hey, I ain't nobody fucking with East Texas. Wow. Nobody. And I'm going to say that. <laughs> On your cameras. Wow. All of them. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you, you feel like, that. you know, I'm a, I'm a hard head from East Texas. So, you know, but at the end of the day, I see the movement. What is what is it going to take for people to, 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 to be able to experience the, 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 the to get the light on East Texas? Well, I think we're headed in the right direction. You know, first of all, what it took was for us all to get our minds right and to realize that we can actually survive and coexist amongst each other without hate, without envy, without jealousy, because the formula to success is for us to come together. There's power in numbers, you know? So when you have weak people and we're all segregated and we're all tearing each other down, how can you stand as one? But when you come together up under one common goal and everybody say, hey, we're not going to let anything break this barrier. No outsiders. Nobody's going to disrespect us. And we become strong and that bond becomes woven. It's going to move. It's going to move like a locomotive and trains don't back up from the last time I heard. Wow. Unified, man. Like yeah. that's the most important thing is unity. Like um, is it who when, when I say unity. Who do you think about outside of the people in your camp that really stands out to you when it come down to they make you feel like it's worth pushing when it comes to the music in East Texas? Oh, man, you got Byron. Byron has a whole squad of people like I do. Um, Impulse Entertainment out of Henderson, Texas. Uh, you got Row NT. Like I say, they're pushing. He's always pushing and uh, going. Smitty Hawkins, of course. Um, so many people. Um, Gigi O'Kirk. Um, Lil Bubba, of course, Lil Bubba boy. showing out. Like Lil Bubba. Shout out to Lil Bubba. Um, 
Like, it's so many that I know of. T. Jones, even though he's not, like, really in the circulatory part of East Texas right now, he's doing stuff outside of East Texas. All of my females are stepping in East Texas, I feel. They're really showing the men how this shit is done. So shout out to all of my queens in East Texas. Um, Simply Mo, which is our first place winner um, of Fast Bash, Big Mother as well. Shout out to TSC Big Red of Texas Arcana. Those are our top three winners of Fast Bash. Wow. They have very bright futures in this stuff. Um, I mean, it's it's so many. It's 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 too many to even begin to name. So if I forget somebody, please don't charge it to my 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 heart. Charge it to my mind. Bigger back Tim, Al D. Of course, Al D is in Houston, but he's from East Texas. Um, so we just have a lot of people. It's too like, many to name. Like what I was saying the other day, you know, um, I don't know. Like a lot of times when people name a lot of artists from East Texas, for some reason I'm not hearing Rosama name. Yeah, Rosama definitely Ro from there. Rosama, that, that's what. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, I know, from but Paris. he's from out there. East Texas, but he's, why people don't call his name? We are affiliating with like Dallas now because he's with Big X. You know what I'm saying? So maybe that's why. But Rosama is definitely a big name. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we know who he is. And yeah, and he's from Big East X. Texas. Texas. Big X and Kyle are pushing him, and he has that look, and he's gonna go far too. So yeah, yeah. I didn't know what what part he's, he's from. from where? Paris. He's from Paris. Yeah. Okay, in Paris, Texas. Yeah, I talked to his dad all the time. Shout out, real some. Yeah, but you know, um, the thing I, I, I like I said, even Smoothie Poppy, I seen him the other day. Smoothie, you know, yeah. just all of these guys, man. You know, when I first started this venture, um, you know, even just everybody they ever came on the show. You yeah. know what I mean, Sergeant J, Sergeant B, yes. all of those people, man. Like I said. All of East Texas, man, from all the way from New Boston, Texas County, Monty Earning, Mount Vernon over there where yeah. my boy Pop mm -hmm. Johnson at. All the way back over to uh, Nacogdoches and Lufkin and all that, man. It's a long, it's a lot of miles across that whole 59. It, it is, but you got to have respect. Yeah. And the thing is, if respect is missing in anything and people lie on you or people do deceitful stuff to you, because one thing about me, it was hard breaking into it because I'm a woman. I'm an older woman at that. So people want to run over you, think you're ignorant, think that you can be ran over. And I'm not that. Well, you know, <laughs> you know, you, you, you rubbing up against it. You know, um, I had rainwater on here. Um, we just gonna go on and get it all the way out there, you know, rainwater, you know, Mama Scott, I'm gonna be honest with you, last time you was on, I don't know if you remember, but did you ever get your money back from Don Chief? No. You never got your money back? No. You never, he, no text or no? No. And what about, what, about the, uh, what about the other, what about the other, other guy? I know he's uh, got flyers nah, and he's two or three of them. shows and stuff. It, it's but. two or three of them, it wasn't just him, it was a couple more too. You didn't get your money from anybody? No. Nope. They just ran off with the bag? Yep. But you know what? That's part of my fault, too. I'm going to assume responsibility behind paperwork. You know, I've always been... I'm going to say this. 90% of the people I've worked with, I've never had a contract with. That blows your mind, right? Yeah. The only one that I've ever had a contract with was T.I. I didn't have a contract with Boost either. But it, the business got handled. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never had a contract with Sauce Walker. The business got handled. I ain't never had a, a contract with Big X the Plug. The business got handled. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I ain't never had a, a contract with Tech Luwap, Rico Reckless, Bugatti Casino. I ain't never had a contract. But when it comes to fuck shit, bro. I mean, this is just an industry. You got certain people. And now I'm one of them people where I do have a big heart, right? And I just tend to believe that people are going to treat me the way I treat them. And I'm very, very transparent. But that's not life. It's not life. So it's teaching me, you know, some of my closest friends like B.R. True, she's like, she's always on me about Mama Scott. You got to quit sending the money because I'm one of them type of people. I move so, so quick and I do a lot of stuff like. I just, if I got it, I just send it to get it out the way so I know it's done. And hey, you commit to it. I got a contract because a lot of people don't know text messages are contracts too. Mm -hmm. Right. So whenever I get ready to lay this lawsuit down on a lot of them, I'm going to go up to five times whatever they owe me. Right. And I have up to three years to do that. So it's a bunch of them. Uh, it's a bunch of them. So just know I'm not stupid. Wow. I just choose to let a person prove to me who they are. I'd rather know who you are solidly and then just not. My, my father, when he was living, he used to tell me, never never loan out more than you can afford to lose to nobody. Mm -hmm. So whenever I give money, I can afford to lose it. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, it's, I don't care what amount it is. If I had, if I, if I lost, if I wager 50 grand and you screwed me on 50 grand, I had it to lose. 
You know what I'm saying? And I'm not, and I, I'm so pro us, like blacks, until I try to put, if I, when God put me in position and blessed me, and even through my own detriment of things that I'm going through in my own personal life, I still find room to bless others, even through me going through my own storms. You feel what I'm saying? Because it's not mine anyway. I well, can't take it with me. That's my mindset. Well, you had the, the moolah guy, and you had a couple yeah. people that, that basically owed you money. Yes. But it seems that the Dallas moolah Mo. Mula Mo and there was one Mo. Who was the other one? Uh, you gave me the text message. I didn't know. Oh, uh, Iced Up Mike. Iced Up Mike. Yes. Um, these people that took the money from that was a lot more than what yes. what uh, Chief and yes. Rainwater took. Yes. Uh, okay. But they all what, came what, back what, what and apologized, the, and they tried to make it right. I chose not to work with them anymore. Okay. So so, so yeah, because Rain apologized too. No. What about Chief? No. So the Dallas people didn't apologize. No. But you do got some good Dallas people up here that did right by you. Little Ronnie. Yes. Uh, Half Pine. Mike Fresh. Mike Fresh. Yes. Uh, a lot of people do yes. right by you. Why do you think? Why do you think that that Rain decided not to come and because he told me, Mama Scott, that it was a uh, he was on a flight that it was a hurricane that it was some stuff going on you know that caused him. Not to be able to show up, you know, and that was what he said. And, you know, and he talked about the fact of you always saying you love everybody. Mm -hmm. and but how can you love him when you turn around and say, F you, blah, 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 blah. When you, when a person, you could be the nicest person in the world. A person keeps stepping on your toe, eventually you're going to say, ouch, right? So when you make a person's character change this is behind you can love a person all day but if you show me something different you can also love it's a thin line between love and hate bro you know what i'm saying so when you draw that line and you make a person back up from you or you show a person that you really have some characters about you or some characteristics about you that they've never seen to give them a reason to say f you or to tell you to go because i have even now and I, I know he'll watch this i don't have anything against him but he has a mother he has a mother, and from what I see, he cherishes his mom. And I don't know how she raised him, but the disrespect is what got him the fuck use, okay? Because I'm not going to sit and, and you know, I, he, I've never had a reason to not, not love him. You know what I'm saying? So he said, you don't love me. So at the end of the day, we'll get off into the specifics about it, but at the end of the day, uh, Rand is a very narcissistic person. I'm going to say that. In my opinion, that's my experience, my personal experience. Not nothing nobody told me, but what he put in me right now. What? Okay, when you think about what happened, okay, you got to understand, man. I was sitting back watching this. I got a call. I got a text from you. I got a call from him. I was yes. in New Orleans at the Essence Fest. Right. I already told you I was right. going that's down Right, that's why you couldn't come to Fast Yeah, Fest. and I was like, man, I got to go down here because right. me and Birdman already topped it up. This is what I'm going to do. And you called me ahead of time, and you also sent the booking money back. Yeah, yeah, but I'm a business and dude, though. And you still though. sent people in, in your my behalf. behalf. Yeah. Okay. But that's what I do. But at the end of the day, and I told Rain that, but at the end of the day, um, you and him, you basically, you had said you was going to bring him down. Was he supposed to bring artists down? No. Now, this is where it gets twisted, right? When I contacted him, read the text message that I sent you the blueprint to, right? The first thing I did, because the young artist that was in East Texas, they was all wanting me to book him because he's always talking down about East Texas artists to them okay so they were like we need rainwater down here because he need to see that we ain't just no country bumping and we got that heat i'm like oh so y'all want him as a judge because he wasn't on my radar i'm gonna be honest i already had my all-star judge panel so he was not on my radar he definitely was not my first choice you know what i'm saying so i reached out on behalf of what the artists wanted i always try to listen to what east texas wants and try to deliver so i reached out to him via text message and I say, hey, I explained the details specifically, the time period that I was booking him for, which is from 3 p.m. to 7, which you having to be there 30 minutes early, you know what I'm saying? And you'll be released after that if you don't want to stay for the concert. He said, let's work. 
he was on a flight supposedly the same day that we talked, okay? And I told him I'm, my budget for for judges, for the ones that are coming from out of town, are $500. I'm going to give you $500 to come sit for four hours, okay? To me, that's decent money within an hour's drive, okay? And he said, yeah, yeah. And I, he said, well, can you send it now? And I said, yeah. So I sent it to him, cash app. And it was the wrong cash app. He told me to send it to another cash app. And I still turned around and sent him the full amount. Because I'm not thinking that I'm going to endure. Well, I got a problem you know. with that. You you got to stop sending oh, yeah, the full I amount, see that Mama now. Scott. You got to send the back end. You got a back end that you got to stay true to. I don't to. be liking the back end because if I trust you, I just rather get the no, business done. No, no, I know you but, trying but to do that, that but you got to pay the back. You got to this, have that back end, man. This is why I'm man. in the position I'm in behind trusting niggas. You know what I'm saying? Pay, so pay fifty percent up front, I, I, and then fifty percent. I ain't gonna say trust the niggas. I'm gonna say some niggas. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So no, you need to start doing contracts. Yeah, Point I know. Blank period. Yes, That's well, what I it got is. that underway now. So after, after all this last experience, because you would think it's like, oh, she don't got her hand hit one, two, three, three, four, Too many five times. times, right? And I always let people make it because one thing I know, I'm a prayer warrior. So what I don't get, God will. Mm -hmm. I might not be around to see it. But you better be careful who you touch. And I'm one of God's kids. I don't care how much I cuss. I don't care what I do. I got a purpose. And he He left me here to do a purpose. So when you touch somebody that he got here doing his work, be careful. You basically end up doing the fast bash. And a uh, few people, it was said on my show that it wasn't nobody there. That the turnout was low. That that that, that now, When I seen it, I seen people in the audience. I seen what I would expect to see because you run that thing how long from 3 to what time do you run it from 12? We start at 3 p.m. and we go we went all the way to 1 a.m. So that's so is it a transition where people are coming yes. in and coming and going? All day. It was a transition when y'all was there. Yeah, that's what I was, yeah, I remember that. So was it empty? But it got thicker, thicker. As was it we empty were, when y'all was there? No, 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 no. Okay. So coming off of being gone for two years off of an event that I built up and then I moved the venue from a city to another city is not you're gonna have to rebuild <coughs> your your volume mm -hmm. okay so the volume that we had we had between three to four hundred people to hit fast bash july 6th i don't know who said what but the concert side of it was not as full because when your people showed up it was not during the competition okay the competition was thick full of people in that building every seat was filled people standing up so i don't know what they seen or what but it probably was the comp the uh when the headliner started showing up because it was an hour in between the contest and the concert where we had to switch over and stuff like that a lot of people were probably tired a lot of people came to support the local artists i don't know but being there from 3 p.m to 1 a.m it was it's, it was we didn't have the crowd like we had during the competition for sure but i'm gonna say this anytime that that people come out to support East Texas artists at that thickness of what it was, because if, if if whoever said that had been there from three to seven, they wouldn't have said that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I don't know what they consider being a success, but I consider us not having any type of situations a success. No fights, no killings amongst a bunch of us out there. You know, we had every blogger from East Texas that was in that building. I don't know what they're saying. We had Tao who shot this in that building that was shooting it. You know, so I was very pleased with the turnout, especially it rained that day. You know, it was a lot of factors mm. that went into that. Um, so I was pleased with it. Wow, and and that's the thing. Like, who did you, you I, I, man, your girl that wanted for sure, but just the ones who came in, did, did Tech come this time? Yes, every uh, headliner showed up. Every headliner every showed up. Every single one of them. Wow, that's dope. So the thing I have about when people speak like that, like, this is what they got to understand. They, the way that they weigh success and the way I weigh success is different. So let me explain. I don't charge people to come there and make a profit. See, he charges people. He charge artists two to three hundred dollars to get on a showcase that's got a hot ass building that's filthy as fuck with no chairs to sit in. The, you know, like rainwater. The audio system sounding like snap. Wait a minute, Mama Scott. You, why, yeah, why so. did you go to? Where, where did you wait a minute? Don't give me that. Where, was, about where was that? Where, that was where here did in you? Dallas, Texas, where I was a special guest on a on a flyer that was so blurry I couldn't even hardly see my face. Did they pay you five hundred or how they much? Didn't they didn't pay me shit. Okay. And I came from my house at 55 years old to be a special guest for him and JG shit here in Dallas, Texas. Wow. 
Okay. And when I got here, um, Big X was there in the building that night because he was letting the Sixers perform that night. Right. But when I got here, it was kind of like unorganized. He had people all on the stage. One, no respect for the people that was up there doing their songs. It was, I had to clear the damn stage at his event before Ooh. my artist. Because, yeah, get off the stage, bro. Show some respect for the artists that's on the stage. It's not, I don't, I don't host hood events, bro. I don't care where I'm at. I could be in the hood. I'm not hosting a hood event. It's going to be organized. It's going to be structured. And they're going to respect it more. You know, but we didn't have... Like there was people in there. So shout out to his vendors that was in there working up under those extreme conditions in the heat. <laughs> Ice couldn't even be kept because it was so damn hot in the building. But you charge an artist two to three hundred dollars for a showcase. And what are they getting out of it? I mean, but that's how that's that's his forte. Then you brag about making 30 grand off of artists. What did you do for the artist? Who was there? What situation did they get out of what you do out of your showcases? But it's been a hustle for years. It's, that's how they work up there. I don't know. I don't. I don't do showcases to benefit off of artists. See what I do? I give. When an artist leaves my showcase, they leaving with something. When they sign up, they know they going for something. They got something that they're gonna benefit from from interviews like Boss Talk or all the other platforms that we have. Photo photographer sessions, they're gonna get trophies, they're gonna get cash prizes, they're gonna get so much publicity and everything that comes with it, they benefit and the networking. And on top of all that, they're in a group chat with me for six to eight weeks, getting artist development behind the scenes for free. Wow, well, tell me, how did you and him get sideways for us on that live? Because you went live. You first went live. Mama's got your live don't last. Like, yo, it goes <laughs> on. I know when you sat in that seat and you sat oh, there yeah, and you I looking at blunt. that camera. I got my blunt. And you got your blunt and, and, and you talking that talk. Like, what was the, what was the motivating factor when it come down to, I know you was talking about the fast bash too mm -hmm. so that you you do you go in to talk about the fat no. bass or do you go in to go in on the in, on the person who might have had an issue no, with you because tony neal came on my live that day too he's a uh, ceo big 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 boss of okay uh, I don't, uh, i'm not DJs. familiar with him tony neal is very relevant in the industry okay. very huge okay, okay. um he's a akon's best friend okay bg's manager type shit okay you know, he's up there he, he's responsible for so much stuff i can't even speak on tony neal but we speak a lot behind the scenes. I speak a lot to a lot of people behind the For scenes. For sure. You know, but at the end of the day, um, I wasn't even going to go live, remember? I told you don't go live. I said, don't go live, Mama Scott. Let's why just did I let go him live? make it. Well, I don't know why you just went on and went live. Because you, <laughs> wait you a don't minute. threaten me. He threat oh, yeah, that text. You don't That's threaten me. That's why you went live, because of the text. You don't threaten me. I'm just being honest. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real, I didn't threaten What did he you. say what on that text? Right. What, what threat? That's what I mean. What he said was, I call it a threat or a blackmail or whatever you want to call it. I'll pay her her money back if she don't go live. That's okay. not a stipulation with me when you owe me my money. And the thing is, is like what I said, keep it, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> at the end of the day, you're not going to tell me what I can do. Period. My husband said, what you want to do? I said, I don't know. He said, do what you feel. That's the only nigga I listen to. The one I sleep and snow beside. So at the end of the day, um, yeah, at the end of the day, when I, I want this to be clear. It's never about the money, Don Chief, uh, Rainwater, none of that shit, because y'all niggas came to me for, for money. Because if Rain didn't need it, or if he still was balling, you would have did what I did, nigga, and came for free, nigga. You would have came for free. So if you didn't need it, you should have declined it and said, don't worry about it. You just came up here to mind. I'm not going to charge you. It's the same distance. Matter of fact, it's shorter because I'm coming from Longview. You didn't have to come nowhere but to Tyler. So let's break it down. You know, so you're not, you might have the status of being Mo 3's manager and you have that and I give that to him because he did an amazing job. I even, I even, you know, marketed for the new, new album because I'm a big, I'm a Mo 3 fan for real. I'm a fan of Mo 3. I took to him because you was responsible for Mo3. You know, or you put a lot of work in with Mo3. But I see why niggas be really wanting to whoop his ass. <laughs> I see I see why. Because his character is flawed. I know ain't nobody teaching you to treat people like this that have been nothing but genuinely good to you. There is not one reason he can give y'all to my he shouldn't have worked with me. Nigga, what do you mean you shouldn't have worked with me? You ain't paid me shit. 
Well, I paid you. He and fucked. I didn't beg you, nigga. You took that 500 so quick, gave me the cash app in milliseconds, nigga. Like, how do you feel like you shouldn't have worked with me? But Mama Scott, he says because he promoted like he was gonna be there, that he, brought people. Hold that up. brought people. When hold he said, the fuck when up. he did the t- that, that shout out, no, he said that it's shout out like calls no, no, people to know. No, 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 no. So in the other text messages you see, I'm asking him, where is your drop? Rap Economics, DJ TB. Everybody did a drop. Half pint, that's requirement for me, you know what I'm saying, or whatever. All right, you know when he did his drop? Two days before, the same night I talked to him, saying, hey, now that could have been a stipulation right there. Why did you wait so long to do this damn drop, right? Because we got a group chat. All the judges, talk to him, ask half pint. Ask all of them if I'm lying. And I'm so present in the, in the, he was the only one that was not like responding back. Like he think he's better than folks type shit. But at the end of the day, I don't even know why I let somebody that's got the same goddamn word that mean the same shit in their last name raffle my goddamn fellas no way. Rain and water the same, ain't But <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> but <laughs> at the end of the day, it never would have been alive had he not disrespected. This is what this Negro said. This is where the games began. I want the public to understand this because he's wrong. And he owes me a public apology because this shit could go really south. Because yeah, you got people up here and I got a whole region behind me that you might not can come back into. Behind this fuck shit. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, if I called you and I, I when he told me he was, um, matter of fact, at 2.45, let me just slow down. I asked him, where were you? He said, what time does it start? Was his response. At 245? Yeah. So he didn't call you beforehand and no. tell you that he not coming? He ran in late? I thought you told him no. one time. Nothing. I talked to him two days before Fast Bash. Spoke with him. And he said, oh, Mama Scott, I'm going to be there early anyway. I'm being tired the night before. I'm going to be super early. So I said, so you're going to be there at 230, right? Yeah, I promise you, I'm going to be there early. I'm, I'm already in Tyler the night before. Okay, so let's talk about this hurricane shit. Everybody live in Texas know the weather didn't get bad to Sunday. Come on now. Was, what part of Texas you stay in? I'm in here. I'm a bit when, when, the, when the rain come? It was Sunday. Okay, it was okay. Sunday when we got but back. You did say you did say that it was raining the day of... Scattered showers, no hurricane, okay. light rain. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, I, no, I don't remember, no thunder, but I don't no what lightning. You said earlier. No, no thunder, no lightning, okay. but it was, yeah, scattered showers. Okay. okay. However, the hur- that was probably the pre shit for the hurricane. Right. The hurricane didn't hit the Sunday in no part of Texas. We had fast bags at 3 o'clock Saturday, okay, July 6th. You was on your Facebook show story list with your feet crossed in Dallas, Texas was your location. Saturday at 8 p.m. I have the screenshots. People were sending them to me. So you plan with my top. You plan on my top, right? So I hit you up. Yeah, yeah, you did. Okay, and I sent you what he said to me. There was nothing in that text message that should have rendered me getting that type of disrespect. He started out being disrespectful. I just said, hey, just send me my money back, bro, and we're going to go our separate ways. He sends back laughing emojis, right? Then he he further says, "Oh, people up here saying that they paid you. I don't. Maybe they paid him, but I don't collect like that for Fast Bass. See, people in Fast Bass, they they actually come in at zero liability because they get tickets to get their money back. I didn't make money off of Fast Bass, so the money that's collected from the artists that are on the roster were the only people we collected from. Period. No outside people. The con- I'm very structured, unlike him." I don't just have 50 million artists showing up just to run them through and do a song or two for two or three hundred damn dollars to brag about how much my bag is at the end of the damn night for not because you don't care about artists like that. You care about getting the bag. And I asked him publicly. I said, you don't care about nobody. He said, no. He said it twice and he's living up to it. So when you don't care about people, you treat people like me like shit because you really have no more. He said, yeah, I thought you loved me. I said, I did. I showed him the big picture I had blew up of me and him and stuff. I've, I've blown up 150 pictures with people I've had, you know, uh, missions with or contact with since I've been doing this. And he was one of them, and I have several pictures. And he said, hang it up, right? Hang the picture up. I said, fuck you. 
You know, because at the end of the day, it was no reason for me to ever be disrespected. No, if somebody disrespected his mama like that, well, he, I heard somebody say, well, some of my counterparts called and contacted him trying to get him to apologize and to return the money back, right? He called me a black bitch. You didn't hear him say that, Mom Scott. I have two people that heard him. And both of them are very reputable people out of East Texas. They called on the phone together to talk to him. One of them is a DJ, and the other was a big artist out of East Texas. Female artist. Wow. Dude. But did you know that he was like this before you even tried to do business with him? <sighs> Not with me. No, I, I've heard like the stuff with him that's going on with him and Yellow Beezy. That's about the most I've ever, you know, negative that I've ever heard. Now, a lot of other people have had since I've been through this. They're like, yeah, he liked that. But you, you know? see him on social media going back and forth him. with people arguing or you've heard about him going back and forth, you know, arguing with people. No. Be, you've never heard about that. You've never seen that. No, because I want to dealt with it. See, when you don't know, I know of him. I don't really be, unless I follow you like that, you feel what I'm saying? I don't follow that nigga life. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just as important as he is. Because the reason why I ask you that is 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 relating to the live. Right. Knowing that he loves yes, to go back and forth. Yes, because when he first came on live, he said, ruffle. are you trying to go viral? It's what yeah. he asked me. Yeah, once you once you <laughs> ruffle his feathers, whatever, he in it. And he going to yeah. be in it full force. Yeah, and and gonna I go see back. that now. And when I didn't watch it live when it was live, but right. I watched it afterwards. Yeah. And I'm like, why you let him get at you like this and really like run your blood pressure up where you was just like. Yeah, because your and franchise and, was and, and on franchise your back. That's your son. That. He wouldn't go out the like room. That. Yes, that was towards the end because what it was, he wanted to hear what he had to say. So he was trying to get me to let him talk. But this is my thing. I was on that type of energy. You got to understand, we transitioned from me going, coming live with Tony Neal. And Tony Neal was like, don't even talk to him. Don't right. even let him on. Well, whatever the case may be. But I was like, fuck that. I'm going to let him on. You know what I'm saying? So I let Why him. did you feel in your heart that you needed to do that? Because I was not trying to. I, if you notice, if you go back and look at it, Cause I you was not on that argue. energy. No, I was not on that energy when I answered the phone. When he came on live, I was very nice to him. You feel me? I was hoping to have a conversation. I really thought he was going to render me an apology because I'm I'm deserved one. You know what I'm saying? So, and when he came on there, he started immediately twisting the narrative. Like, oh, and trying to switch it, you know, because he, you know, he has all the followers. So, of course, when he gets on, the volume goes up on the live right. and stuff. So, he's like, oh, hang them all three posts. Post. Ain't no goddamn, you ain't hanging shit up. But you do shit like that to people. And I don't care. See, the difference between me and others, these podcasts, I don't I don't live off of them. Right. I don't have to have them. You know, right. so I'm a real person. And it doesn't, I don't come on here for the views. If I'm on here, I'm on here to state my case. I'm on here to, to let you know I'm a real person, nigga. And you're going to get hurt like that one day, fucking with the wrong person. It won't be me because you're not worth me. You know what I'm saying? Doing that to you. But at the end of the day, it could, it could land him in a situation because somebody going to touch you one day. You know what I'm saying? Don Chief, too. Because you can't keep playing these games with people and thinking that you're going to keep getting passes. You shouldn't let nobody yep. get under your skin like yep. that. Nobody. I agree. I agree. I totally agree and with you. And, you know, I really, I really, I'm always going to put God into this yep. because I always say God put us through yep. everything for a reason. And maybe the, the things that you keep repeating in your yep. life, because yep. you're repeating a lot yep. of stuff in your life. Yeah. It's for a reason yeah. for you to open your eyes and learn from it. And if God keep putting you through it, it, you haven't learned what you need to learn. Well, the learning part comes from, I don't think I do say like from y'all it's like repeating, but it's different situations and different scenarios, right? The biggest part of it is paperwork. But I'm going to tell you something. Paperwork don't mean shit. If a person going to fuck over you, they going to fuck over you with paperwork or without it. But we, it's business. But, it's business. But it is. But I've, I've won lawsuits and still not won because you, you go for people to get the shit and it's not there. So they can say all day that a goddamn paperwork is going to solve it. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's the integrity of niggas that's got to change. The paperwork ain't shit. That's why I don't care about reaping no damn none of that because your character is what's flawed to me. You got to mm -hmm. answer for that. So when the money is spent with me, I already, when it's spent, when it's sent, I'm already prepared because I'm expecting you to do a job. Right. My job is fulfilled. The budget was already there. When I sent it, I was already at a loss, right? Because I'm paying for something that I'm expecting services for. 
But a paperwork, yeah, it helps in some cases if it's corporations and shit like that. But with niggas most of the time, it's not nothing that a paper going to do for you. I'm sorry, because niggas ain't going to have it to go back and sue. Or they're going to have some type of tactic. They gonna I move have it around. one lawsuits, bro. I'm telling you. And can't collect. And can't collect. So fuck paperwork. I'm a people person. I'm a real person. From Sauce Walker and Sauce Cake, I'm, I won't, if you're looking at this sauce, you need to, Sauce claimed me as his god mama years ago. You know what I'm saying? Bugatti, all the ones that really, Big X, all these niggas know I rock like this. T.I., Boosie, I ain't never had problems with people that's real. Only fake, fraud-ass niggas I have situations with. People that's really out here living a life that they're not living. Because if you live in a life you're living, it would never be no room for fuckery. I don't live fuckery. I do good business. You know what I'm saying? So if you're in positions to where you got to fraud people or fuckery, you're living a false-ass narrative of a life. People think you got it and you really don't. Let me ask you this, Mama Scott. Do you think you and Rain could ever come to a resolve i never have nothing against him i mean i believe and even now i don't harbor no ill feelings towards him i'm hurt more than anything because i trusted this nigga and then for him to try to twist the narrative and try to do this shit just for this internet shit that's bullshit bro like you don't sleep well at night do you because if you do how can you do that you got three kids triplets or however many kids you get that shit gonna come back on your kids bro the shit that you do to people will hit miss me and hit your kids Hit your parents, hit your family. So don't think that that shit is gonna slide because it ain't because when you sit there and have to see them go through shit in life, just remember the shit you did. Karma is real, bro. And I ain't gotta be nowhere around to believe it. But one thing I can agree with Stephanie is when you say you keep doing the same thing, what I keep doing is loving. I won't let nobody stop me from doing me. I'm not gonna stop me from being who I am behind fuck boys, behind fuck niggas, or none of that shit. I'm gonna continue to be me, continue to do the shit that God asked me to do, which is to help. I am here, and I was left here at the end of 2020, facing death of COVID, and I told God I was gonna sit here and I was gonna, if he left me here, I would affect lives in a positive manner. And I've been doing that. So the money, people look at it, yes, a lot of money, but you can't take it with you. And as long as I still got breath coming through my lungs and stuff like that, you're talking about somebody that's facing not being here right now, which I ain't claiming that because I know God got it. But at the end of the day, I'm struggling with other things. And even with that, I have to have my faith where it got to be. And I don't, it's, it's, it's not even the money part. I'm more mad at the people for having, holding conversations with me. Holding conversations with me and being respectful until they get the money and then you fuck for what? What is that for? Because I the money was never the issue. I gave it to you. So why do you feel the need to not produce your part of the bargain? You know what I'm saying? Or or to even for some of the ones I tell you about I gave passes to that um I have lost money on. They come back. Well, I used up Mike, I'm gonna shout him out real quick, real quick. I put a big budget behind Ice Up Mike. Supposed to have been helping me with my label and this and other. Okay. He got a lot of connects. He does amazing work with photography and stuff. But at the time, I don't know what he was going through. He got over on me. Just in the last like six months, he's in my inbox damn near daily. Mama Scott, I'll work it out. Let me work it off. Let me. I don't have the desire to let you even work it off. Because once you showed me what it was, I'm just going to say, hey, be blessed. Go on about your business, bro, because I can't trust you. You know what I'm saying? So people will 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 get over on you for a small amount of money and block their blessings on something big down the line. So I'm just that type of person. Like, yeah, with the Don Chiefs or whatever, he must have really needed it because you bypassed the entire city of Dallas to come to East Texas to get $1,500. You know, a lot of you, oh, why she give it to him? Because he was begging for it. God damn it. He said it was a birthday party. He needed the money. Swore up and down. He doubled me my money back. Come to talk and break the cycle and da 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 da. You just help me out. But niggas, forget that. You sit here and act like you ain't did this shit. Like you ain't called me and begged me for this money. My husband was right there when you begged me for the money, nigga. You know, so it's like. But I, I just don't have the energy to keep, you know, I, I'm a good person, you know, so I'm a, I'm a convicted felon from two states. I'm not perfect. I don't claim to be no better than nobody else. I've had to learn a lot and I'm still learning, you know, still going through stuff in life, still behind people. The reason why I'm going through what I'm going through right now is behind me helping a mass of people. You feel what I'm saying? But I'm sacrificed. 
to do that. Everybody not cut from the same cloth to do that shit. Uh, we appreciate you, Mama Scott. Uh, all the stuff that I've experienced uh, since we've been uh, linking up, you know, I, yeah. I definitely like the way you always trying to do something to show uh, appreciation to the artists, yeah. not only on your team, but the people that are in your community. Yes. I think that's alive to be able to do that. And I think God, it, he sees what you're doing. You know yeah. what I mean? So that's that's the most important thing to keep that, that whole thing going, man, because to keep pe people from focusing on... Uh, you know, shootings and the killings that's going on down in them yes. parts to, to focus it on the music yes. and keeping it as a deterrent to keep them alive. Yes. I think that's powerful. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because so, it's more than money to me. Definitely. And I, and I, I definitely applaud you for and that. And I ain't never had this money. Let me, let me, when you, when you come from nothing to something, see, I'm a little different. I didn't, you know, I went out there, I bought cars, I got jewelry, I got me a home, I did what the average, but once I got what I wanted, bro, the overflow, I didn't have sitting in a bank. I didn't care about saying I got 100000 in the bank. My kids need it. My family need it. My church need it. My community need it. You know, the hundreds of people I've helped behind the scenes that people will never know. And I feel so good about it, bro. Because it's people that, that genuinely needed my help that will never have to hear that shit. Only time you hear me saying somebody do something to me is in a situation like this where they have disrespected me and they think I'm somebody to be played with. I'm too nice of a person. If you just really needed the money, you could have hollered at me and say, he, "What was the what was the what was the the uh, the heart the hardness in him calling saying, hey, I really just don't want to sit there for three, four hours, Mama Scott. You know, I want to come to the concert side. I know you paid me. You know, this and I'll be like, okay. She, you know, we could have worked it out. It never had to even come to that. But you come in there trying to taunt me then Sunday morning you're taunting me I'm in Tyler he's I got a text message in my phone where he's like telling me he's in Tyler but you know people have communication problems right yeah right. and also <laughs> you are old enough to be his mother yes that's another thing you know and I and and I I just spoke on this on something else yes. and then have nothing to do with this but uh when a person is younger I guess for me, I look at them in a way to where... They don't know no better. I can't trust the fact of what they might or might not do because yeah. I've been young before. Yeah. And I think about people like, either, not just Rain, but uh, any of those. Shakur Stevens, that was the one I was talking on. Like, they're young. Yeah. Like, I could look at them as, me and you was 30, 34, they was in Pampers. You understand what I'm saying? So I when do. I look at that, that gives me more patience with them so I get it but it is business it is but you have something a bigger a greater a greater example that you're being to a people yeah so you have to keep that in mind just to operate amongst these young folks so you can help them yeah that's why I'm stepping out of it because I be don't hurt somebody because I'm serious like <laughs> I'm dead ass serious because I'm not even gonna talk about the vision that I had doing to this child for real in my yeah. head. So when it when it gets to that, because it's more to this, it's not the fucking money. It's the fact you plan on my phone, bro. My husband watching it. My sons are having to endure shit, certain shit. People know who we are. You know what I'm saying? I'm, one of my sons is approaching Cedar Hill behind this shit. So really? the shit is not fucking light to me. You know what I'm saying? Shit can really get thick. But at the end of the day, and I'm saying that publicly because you touch one of mine. It's, it, he, he, and then you come on here and you say she trying to start a war. I'm the last person you need to say that lie about, nigga. I don't, I don't create wars. I, I try to create where it's not division, where it's where we all can come. Kumbaya, my trying to bring unrealistic ass. You know what I'm saying? But at the end, <laughs> at the end of the day, the problem too come behind other men, other people not holding people accountable for their actions and sitting there letting them keep getting away with the shit because they your friends, because they this that, and the other. If you're my friend and you fuck over somebody that's a mutual friend, I'm gonna let you know about it publicly. I don't care if it's on this platform i don't care if it's at the church house i don't care if it's in the middle of hell you're gonna know don't do that shit around me bro because they matter to me and that shit filing you're gonna be held accountable the problem we sweep shit up under the counter like and get me to like calm down mama scott why i gotta be the one calm down the fuck why i gotta be the one calm down mama scott again <laughs> you are, you are the only that's one. right you oh are as, as, you as, the as, you as the example oh you are the damn example nigga shit don't that's look why at me you know, and I know that's, you know, work you know, progress. that's really be real don't about look it. at me that then. was the first and when she, i seen you i was like pop johnson ain't no way in hell i'm meeting that woman because of goddamn harris purple <laughs> 
and I don't need to meet her because she got purple hair. When she dancing in that sauce walker video. You go I will never forget this day. Then I said, right in here, I said, Pop, I don't want to meet her. I've been seeing her. Yeah, you got to meet her. Why? Because I know already she not going to want to hear what I got to say. But I Because some of the things I, I say do. to you, you go right and do whatever else you want to do. I have not been able to say, hey, man, I talked to Mama Scott and she was able to, I was able to tell her. We, and no. you know what you can say? That That's a real nigga. No. That's a real that, nigga. That's, what, that's the only thing a nigga can say about Mama Scott. That's that nigga real. Because the shit I do, motherfuckers wish they could do or say. I'm just one of the ones that carry it out. Some people just, they sit back and be like, man, I wish I could say that shit. She got the ball to say, I do. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, it's what I'm meant to do. I'm not, I'm not groomed to be like on the, on the, on the, on, I guess big screen, unless you don't cap, capture this. I can't be groomed to walk a certain way and talk a certain way just to please people. I'm not a people pleaser. You know what I'm saying? I'm just not, I'm just me. And if a person either going to rock with that or they not. Can I be, can I be, can I be wrong? Yes. Can I look at situations differently? Because I'm absorbing everything y'all are saying right now. I'm not an ignorant person, you know what I'm saying? To the point where, oh, uh, that motherfucker crazy as fuck. No, I'm not. <clears throat> so, that's why things no, have No, you not, were different than what I thought you were going to be. No, th that's why things yeah. haven't, haven't escalated. Because I do take that, that into consideration that he's just really still wet behind the ears. Type shit. But at the end of the day, he's old enough to know better. I agree with that. He old enough to know better. Now I want to know what he t what his ten thousand dollars that he said he gonna pay these goddamn people bills because you said it on live. So show me a video of you doing that like ASAP because you haven't did it and that's cap where I'm from. You know what I'm saying? Because if I say I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it. You say you gonna get a five hundred dollars to mow three kids? Go over there and give it to him. Go put give it, it to him, nigga. Go. You not hurting me? Do what you say because I always do what I say. Wow, man, Mama Scott, I ain't gonna lie. Like I said. I already know you was a firecracker when I seen you from a distance. I already looked from afar. <laughs> I had boss talk already, okay? I was doing my thing. You did. And I was like, no, hell no, yep. Pop Johnson. I was lucky yep. to meet you. This yep. is slick. The way I was this at happened. the beginning when I first got introduced to you. Yeah, and, and I always, like I said, the one thing I do know, Rain said, man, you, I said, look, I'm going to have her on her next. Now, yeah. you know she going to come back and say, oh, you messing, you going to have her on? I said, look, gonna block I met next next both of y'all. Like no. I, I met both of y'all. You hear me? He going to block I, your ass. It don't matter. It don't matter. <laughs> I met both of y'all. I, I, I play a level playing field. Yeah. You know, right. people try to make it like it's not, but I'm just a real one. When it comes down, I deal with people and I know yeah. my ministry is to help everybody. Yeah. You know, I might do this or do that, but at the end of the day, you nor him can't say I didn't gave you some no. gems that, that basically say, hey man, we got to do better as a people. You I, know what I mean? I just want to say that I want to look dead. Where the camera at? I want to look dead, 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 dead in his face. You owe me an apology. I didn't do anything to receive that type of disrespect, bro. For real, I don't have shit against you, but you need to change your ways. I'm just being honest, like, for real. Everybody ain't to be fucked with, and everybody ain't to be played with, and I'm one of them ones that's not to be played with, for real, because I ain't never did nothing to you, Rainwater, or Benjamin, as you say. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, as far as you talking about not working with me, hey, that was your choice. You should have just said, don't send the cash out. Wow. Or, you know what I'm saying? For real. But I just want to tell him, I harbor no ill feelings towards no man, woman, boy, or girl. I don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. You know what I'm saying? For real. But at some point, you should know that woman ain't did nothing to me. Why did I do her that way? Man, that's Mama Scott, y'all. She came on Boss Talk 101 and uh, basically... Uh, Rainwater, you're going to have to pay her. I told you on the show, she not going to stop. Listen, you either got to go get that money away uh, <laughs> or if you do something. You can't sit on the couch twirling your toes. She she not trying to hear that, man. And like I can say, I want to see a resolution, to be honest with you. I know already there will be a resolve because I believe in ev evolution. I'm willing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I know already, like I said, y'all both bigger than $500. Yeah. Yeah. So I know it's bigger than that. It's, it's just a thing where, where, where things done got you know, the way the devil like to see it divided. So I just always look at that. It's a lot of people. I got some disturbing calls about that where people love you. You know what I mean? And they was really upset. But at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? You, you, I know you're going to keep them at bay and say, hey, man, we yeah. can figure this out because this is bigger than 500. That's what it's about, though, is that on the flip side of it, us being able to be bigger than the mistake, right? Yeah. I'm bigger than the mistake. But he, he's going to have to see me. He's going to have to talk to me. I need to know why. 
look me in my eyes and tell me why you did me like you did me. Because at the end of the day, I'm not ducking shit. I want a conversation with this young man. And if I can't do nothing else, maybe I can add to him being a better person and not doing this again to somebody else. Really appreciate that because I know you're one of them ones that you like your questions. Like when you hit a person with your question, like be like, damn, where'd you get that from? You know, or even the input that you have. And that's, I think that's what makes this a unique podcast mm-hmm. because you really be coming from, from angles that people don't really even think about, you know, so that's very appreciated. And sometimes we need the awareness of the mistakes that we make. Like, yes, I know I've made like several mistakes throughout this industry. Cause when you ain't had shit, when you get it, sometimes like a nigga like me don't know how to process what we going through, or how, what we got. And so what I do, I start shit. Everybody's getting shit. You get a car, you get a car, <laughs> you get this. And it made me happy to be able to do. You gotta understand I'm a doer. I'm not a receiver. I give way more than what I've ever received. You Which know what is saying? cool, but you have people out here who will keep taking yes, they from take advantage you of it. and do not appreciate. Not yes. everybody's appreciative like you I are. I agree. So it, it, you can always keep doing it, but you're going to have to know in your yes. mind when you give, you're giving from your heart and know that it's for God and it's not because if that person ungrateful, they're ungrateful. You know you bless them and you move on to somebody else. Yep. Wow, thank you so much for coming on the show, Mama Scott. How can people get a hold of you and and, uh, bring some money instead of trying to catch (laughs) it? How can people get a hold of you if they're trying to look? You can find me at Mama Scott, um, well, Mama underscore Scott underscore on IG and Marnita Scott on Facebook, Marnita Reese Scott on Facebook, and everything else is just straight Mama Scott, M-O-M-A. Wow, and and when is it going to be another event? You know, I just did the... The, the, the woman event with you, you she done? Said no more for the year. No okay. more, no more events you for rested. the year. Major events. Now I am. I've been reached out to since Fast Bash. I have several different um, man uh, opportunities to work with people. People want to work with me on different Space Boy Fresh from ninety seven point nine to B. Shout out to Space Boy. Um, Trill Talk, no Pill Talk. Shout out to Trill Talk. Um, no Pill Talk. I guess a lot, a lot of people. BT Studios. I got a lot of stuff that's that's getting ready to come into play. So I'm not going to say it's not going to be events, but you'll definitely start seeing more of me. Man, thank you so much that's for coming good. on the show, man. We love you, Mama Scott. Love y'all too. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we Boom. out.